I'm investigating the disappearance of 12-year-old Tia Sharp, who went missing in New Addington around midday on Friday. It goes without saying, this is an absolutely terrible time for Tia's family, who are all desperate for her to be found safe and well. Uh, I cannot imagine how it must feel for this family after more than five days. There are over 80 officers working on this case, 40 of them detectives, 40 of them specialist search officers. We are doing everything we can, everything we possibly can to find her. Our appeal was for anyone who may have seen her or who has information about her to come forward. The harrowing incident of a child's murder is invariably unsettling. However, this infamous case from the UK adds an extra layer of horror. The case revolves around the disappearance of 12-year-old Tia Sharp from her grandparents' residence in South London, which raised eyebrows from the get-go. The nation united in a desperate search for the missing schoolgirl. As the scent of a decomposing body pervaded the crime scene, the police finally discovered Tia's body. Shockingly, it was merely feet away from where it had been all along, much like her murderer. As we commence, we extend our deepest condolences and heartfelt prayers to the family and friends of Tia Sharp, an innocent victim of this heinous act committed by a profoundly disturbed individual. Welcome to a place of paradox, New Addington, South London. It was once envisioned by urban planners in the 1930s as the epitome of garden city living, combining the best aspects of urban and rural life. However, this vision still needs to materialize. By 2012, New Addington had gained a notorious reputation as a hotspot of gang violence, drug abuse, and unemployment. Yet despite its tribulations, the area always fostered a robust sense of community, a trait that was deeply needed when a crisis unfolded in August 2012. New Addington held a unique place in the heart of a cheerful and cheeky 12-year-old girl, Tia Sharp. She had just completed her first year at secondary school, navigating her life with confidence and humor. This was where she was born, in the very house her grandmother, Christine Bicknell, a 47-year-old, still resided. Her mother, Natalie, was merely 18 when Tia arrived in their lives. Although Natalie had separated from Tia's father a few months prior, she was overjoyed to have baby Tia as the center of her universe. With Christine's unwavering support, Tia was nurtured in a close-knit family. She grew to consider her mother and grandmother more her best friends than just relatives. When Tia turned 12, she had a caring stepfather, David Niles, and two half-brothers, Jack, aged three, and one-year-old, Harry. Tia's life was not without its fair share of bumps, as she had inconsistent contact with her biological father, Stephen Carter, and faced social services issues due to poor school attendance and her parents' cannabis use. However, she consistently performed well academically, and by the time she reached secondary school, Tia had blossomed into a confident, lively, and resilient young girl. Tia was a petite dynamo, standing at just 4 feet 5 inches, but she was the life of the room. She was fearless in standing up to bullies, loved performing, and often sang into her Blackberry while watching her favorite show, The X Factor. She found solace in her grandmother's house in New Addington, which she considered her second home. With two minor brothers, her house was typically crowded and noisy, and she often had to sleep on the couch due to a lack of bedrooms. Her grandmother's house provided her with a room of her own. She also greatly admired the man she affectionately called Granddad, 37-year-old Stuart Hazel. During her summer vacation in August 2012, Tia expressed interest in spending a few nights at her grandparents. Stuart, who had often babysat Tia even more than her grandmother, was more than happy to take her. He was like a big kid, indulging Tia by allowing her to stay up late gaming and watching movies. Stuart was no stranger to legal troubles, having been in jail three times. However, despite his past, the Sharps knew him as a man who had been nothing but kind to Christine. He had a history with the family, having dated Natalie before he became involved with Christine. He had issues with alcohol and marijuana, but managed to maintain stability in his relationship with Christine, provided he abstained from vodka. Despite a setback in 2010, when Stewart was jailed for 12 months after an aggressive outburst at a pub, Christine stood by him. On August 2nd, Stewart met Tia at the Croydon railway station. CCTV footage showed them riding the tram and shopping in New Addington, buying pizza, oven chips, iced lollies, and Tia's favorite sausage rolls. Tia seemed relaxed and content. That night, Christine called Stuart to check on how things were going. In the background, she could distinguish Tia's hearty laughter. At precisely 10.12 p.m., Stuart dispatched a message to Christine, stating, After Tia retires for the night post her family guy viewing, 
I planned to go to sleep as well. Later, at 11.33 p.m., he sent an additional message saying, Good night, dear. I will contact you tomorrow. XXX. The final message from Tia's Blackberry was dispatched to a friend at 12.42 a.m. upon Christine's arrival home from her night shift the following day. She discovered Stuart solitary and engrossed in television. Hazel informed her that Tia had embarked on a shopping excursion to Croydon intending to purchase new flip-flops and promise a return by 6 p.m. As 6 p.m. passed without her arrival, Christine's worry escalated. Tia had left her phone on charge and had neglected to take her travel card. She was nowhere to be found, neither by Natalie nor by Christine and Hazel, who drove the streets in a frantic search. At the stroke of 10 p.m., they reported Tia's absence to the authorities. Stewart relayed his activities to the officers, stating he had risen in the morning, had coffee, tidied the house, tended to the dogs, and smoked cigarettes. Tia, he mentioned, had awoken late, and he prepared her breakfast. She had expressed an intention to visit Croydon and rendezvous with a friend whom he did not know before she exited the premises. Stuart Hazel, at the age of 37, bore a countenance that could easily provoke suspicion, resembling an exemplary figure in a drug abuse warning poster. His extensive criminal record made him an unlikely candidate for a caretaker, not a welcomed guest. An investigation of the new Addington house yielded no results. Still, a neighbor suddenly corroborated Stewart's vague recollection of Tia's departure without her phone, Paul Meehan, who claimed to have observed Tia exiting the house at the very time Stewart had indicated, around 12.10 p.m. The police then shifted their focus to the plausible scenario that Tia may have journeyed to the tram stop and traveled to Croydon. On August 4th, one of British history's most widely publicized search campaigns was initiated. The disappearance of the 12-year-old girl from New Addington dominated the headlines. The Sun newspaper offered a reward of £25,000 for any information that could assist in locating Tia. Within a few hours, t-shirts bearing Tia's image were produced, and the entire New Addington community engaged in distributing flyers and scouring the streets and surrounding woods. Tia's father, Stephen Carter, traveled from Northampton with Stuart Hazel spearheading the search. Natalie's brother emerged as the unofficial spokesperson for the Sharps conducting press interviews and conferences. The consensus was that Tia had not absconded, nor would she have voluntarily accompanied a stranger. Christine, her grandmother, had often warned her about the dangers posed by strangers. A subsequent search of Christine's house, this time with the assistance of a sniffer dog, found nothing noteworthy. An exhaustive review of 800 hours of CCTV footage revealed no trace of Tia at the tram stop, on the tram, or anywhere else. Natalie said it was like she'd walked out the door and fallen into a hole. On the day of her disappearance, there were 55 reports of Tia's sightings, all of which were thoroughly investigated but yielded no significant leads. On the 6th of August, Monday, the family issued a heartfelt appeal for information regarding Tia's whereabouts. During the events, Hazel's father disputed Stewart's narrative. Stewart claimed to have accompanied Tia to the tram stop. This contradiction was just one among many in an evolving narrative. Journalists flocked to the Addington residence as news of Tia's disappearance gained traction. Stewart Hazel, the last person to have seen Tia alive, was the focal point of media attention. The constant media presence and recurring police visits created an intense environment for Stewart, who felt increasingly cornered. The consensus was that Stewart was withholding information. His movements outside the house were constantly interrupted. Despite a third thorough search of the house by the police using dogs, no substantial clues were found. With each passing day, hope was gradually replaced by a profound despair. On the 9th of August, Stewart Hazel, overwhelmed by the speculation, requested an interview with ITV. Within hours, he was in his Addington Homes Lounge, alongside a former detective and an ITV journalist, ready to defend his reputation to the nation. However, the interview did not go down well. Stewart was perceived as evasive and nervous, behaving like someone with something to hide. His body language was scrutinized. His earlobes reddened when questioned about Tia, an indicator of elevated blood pressure and stress, and his excessive blinking suggested anxiety. While he was clear about his activities, he was vague about Tia's actions and words that morning. Despite the mounting suspicions, the Sharp family stood by Stuart. Christine constantly reassured Stuart of her support. From the moment Taya disappeared, Hazel was a source of comfort for Christine. He held and consoled her night after night. 
Unbeknownst to her, she was sleeping directly beneath the posing body of her beloved grandchild, and the child's was right next to her. Stuart Hazel was a deeply deranged individual. Christine had believed she knew everything about Stuart, but she was profoundly mistaken. Stuart's internal world was a nightmare, fueled by his obsessive fantasies about violent and abuse of children. Stuart's upbringing was dysfunctional. His mother was a pro his father a career criminal. He was put into foster care at an early age. His mother and sister later described him as creepy, untrustworthy, and a kleptomaniac. His mother seemed unable to correlate his upbringing with his behavior. By 12, Stuart was already on a path to addiction and delinquency. He became part of a South London gang dealing in cocaine. He amassed a series of convictions, including grievous bodily harm, assault, theft, and burglary. He was volatile and prone to self-harm and depression. Others described him as a fantasist and a compulsive liar. He once falsely claimed his father's death to get additional time off work. His tearful performance was unsettlingly convincing. The worst aspect of Stuart hadn't emerged yet. It's probable Stuart had a predilection for children long before 2005, but around this time he began to indulge in child abuse pornography actively. This became an addiction that consumed most of his free time. In 2010, his sick fantasies moved on to his step-granddaughter Tia, who was 10 years old at the time. He tailored his online searches using keywords like dark-haired girl with glasses and incest. Often, a guest at Stuart's home, Tia unknowingly became the subject of his voyeuristic tendencies. Stuart manipulated a light fixture in her room, creating a discreet peephole to capture her on and clandestinely applying lotion to her legs. He also removed the bathroom door under the pretense of refurbishing it. By 2012, his unsettling behavior escalated as he started to record Tia sleeping. Detective Chief Inspector Nick Scola posited that Stewart had deluded himself into believing Tia reciprocated his feelings. By August 2012, Stewart's twisted interest in Tia had morphed into an obsession, spending hours each day viewing child abuse pornography on his phone. The compulsion to act on his perverse fantasy was intensifying, potentially beyond his control. Perhaps he had no intention to resist it. On Friday, August 10th, Christine was greeted by an evil smell that had permeated the house for days, now more vital than ever. The source of the nauseating stench reminiscent of a deceased rodent or cat-soiled rug eluded her. Stuart had left the house early that morning, leaving a note indicating he was out to buy a newspaper and would return soon. Later that day, the police arrived for a fourth search of the premises. Christine alerted them about the smell, which they immediately identified as the scent of death and decay. The officers evacuated the house, and within ten minutes of scouring the attic, they discovered the body of 12-year-old Tia Sharp. Her unidentifiable body, due to a week in the humid, heated attic, was wrapped in trash bags and sheets and concealed amidst bags and debris between the attic rafters. The cause of her death was indeterminable. The revelation that Tia's body had been in the house the entire time was a horrendous shock for the Sharp family, as was the thought that Stuart, a trusted family friend, could be the perpetrator. The police found a bag of Tia's clothes and Stuart's broken glasses next to her body. Memory cards from Stuart's digital camera were discovered wedged into a doorframe, the images on them exposing the extent of his deviancy. The police later apologized to Tia's family for overlooking her body during the three previous searches, attributing this oversight to human error and an inexperienced detective. Evidently, they had not thoroughly inspected the attic, even when the detection dog had signaled towards the ceiling. They had also failed to place Stewart under police watch. Consequently, he had the opportunity to abscond, which it appeared he had. Stuart Hazel, noticeably intoxicated, stumbled into a shop a few train stops from New Addington. Chloe Bird, an 11-year-old girl who had just seen a news report, identified him. She immediately informed her parents, who contacted the police. Several other people recognized Stuart that day before he disappeared into Cannon Hill Common, Morden. A police helicopter equipped with a thermal imaging camera located Stuart, who had concealed himself under a blanket and log. Stuart Hazel was arrested around 9 p.m. on August 10th. As the police van drove away, about a hundred bystanders yelled, cursed, and kicked at the vehicle in outrage. Natalie Sharp expressed her hope that someone would apprehend him before the authorities could. After the tragic discovery of Tia's remains, a spontaneous memorial began to take shape near Christine's home. This poignant tribute rapidly expanded, featuring candles, cards, stuffed animals, and flowers. 
It was a tangible representation of the community's collective heartbreak over the premature and brutal loss of a young life. Stuart Hazel, the accused, initially pleaded not guilty to the charge of Tia Sharp's murder on May 7, 2013. He asserted that Hazel was intoxicated on the fateful night and attempted to assault Tia shortly after 12.45 p.m. It was likely that Tia resisted, as evidenced by her fingerprints on Hazel's damaged glasses. In an effort to silence her, Hazel allegedly suffered Tia. However, the violation of Tia did not end there. A photograph discovered on Hazel's phone, taken approximately at 6.30 a.m., showed Tia in a provocative pose on her bed, with visible stains on the sheets. The pattern of her skin indicated that Tia had likely been deceased for several hours at that point. It seemed Hazel had spent hours with Tia's body and arranged her in this position. This single image, a horrifying memento, was retained on his phone. During the period when the world was desperately searching for his missing granddaughter, Hazel frequently viewed the image and searched for incest-related websites. Hazel altered his plea to guilty on the fifth day of his trial. He received a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 38 years. Meanwhile, Paul Meehan, Hazel's neighbor who falsely claimed to have seen Tia, was convicted for wasting police resources and received a five-month prison sentence. Now, for nine months, Stuart Hazel insisted Tia Sharp died after falling downstairs. Today, he finally pleaded guilty to murdering her. But the dramatic turnaround came simply too late to prevent Tia's family enduring four days of harrowing evidence. The South London schoolgirl's body was found hidden in the house of her grandmother, Hazel's former partner, last summer. And just to warn you, some of you may find the detail in Jane Deeth's report upsetting. So what can you tell me about the murder of Tia Sharp, Stuart? He told them nothing. Well, a couple of minutes, you must listen, please. But today, Stuart Hazel finally admitted a sexual and sadistic murder of a 12-year-old girl who trusted and idolised him. Tia Sharp's family thought Hazel loved her like a granddaughter. But one night in the summer holidays, when he was looking after Tia, he assaulted her and then, it's believed, smothered her. On trial, he claimed she died after falling down the stairs, until today, when his legal team asked for the charge of murder to be put to him again. He paused and then said guilty. It was the one true word he's spoken since he murdered Tia Sharp. Apparently, he felt her family had suffered enough. Or did he just realise the evidence against him was too strong? Tia Sharp's family, her mother Natalie and grandmother Christine Bicknell, Hazel's former partner, had to endure that appalling evidence. Videos Hazel had taken of Tia Sharp when she was sleeping, with her blood on it. The indecent photograph he took of her after he'd killed her. The searches for child pornography and incest on his mobile phone. Tia Sharp's father said hearing what Hazel did to his daughter shattered his heart. Hazel will be sentenced tomorrow. In my opinion, it will not be enough. He should serve his time, then be hung. The police say Stuart Hazel must be removed from society. Hazel is a violent and dangerous man who poses a significant risk to young girls. Yeah. It's only proper he will receive a long prison sentence. He lied to his partner, Christine Bicknell, telling her her granddaughter had gone shopping for sandals and not come home. He lied to the police, playing the grieving granddad, desperate to find Tia. He sat on the sofa while Tia's body was in the loft and lied. I know deep down in my heart that Tia walked out of my house. She walked out there and I know damn well because she was seen walking down the pathway. I know she made that track down to that way. What happened after that is I don't know. For eight days, he had everyone believing Tia Sharp was missing. The police searched the loft twice, but failed to find her. The media outside Stuart Hazel's front door meant he couldn't move the body. After a week, the smell led to Tia's discovery, and Hazel was arrested. People on the estate knew him as a nasty, violent man. He'd been to prison for dealing cocaine and possessing a blade. In fact, it was a machete. 
In a court statement, Tia's mother, Natalie Sharp, described wanting to hurt Stuart Hazel. Except, she said, I could never manage to hurt him like he's hurt me. In November 2013, leading search engine firms, including Google and Microsoft, yielded to societal demands, implementing measures to hinder online child abuse imagery access. The tragic case of Tia Sharp was a frequent reference in this crusade to catalyze the necessary change. However, for the Sharp family, the grief and terror following Tia's murder remain relentless, casting a perpetual shadow over their lives. Natalie Sharp poignantly expressed her unending agony. Each breath I draw is akin to a taste of hell. There is no respite, no easing, no reprieve. 